storm over Olympic security has intensified today as athletes from around the world begin arriving in London. The Defence Secretary has refused to rule out using even more service personnel for security. Philip Hammond says if they're asked to find more people, they will, after adding 3,500 members of the forces to the security operation last week. And he's told MPs those deployed to the Games will be given an appropriate package to recognise their role. Well, shortly we'll be hearing exclusively from the Chief of the Defence Staff. But first, James Hurst reports. The race for the start line is now on. The American sailing team, among the first Olympians to arrive at Heathrow this morning, they landed in the middle of a storm about Olympic security and attempts to reassure them. The number one thing for me is, is it working? And all the briefs I've had from LOCOG, from the people on the ground, is that the combination now of large numbers of military plus G4S are doing a fantastic job. At Heathrow, the athletes are being met by a dedicated team in Olympic uniforms. When they get to the Olympic Park, they'll see armed forces personnel in their uniforms. But while the government is insisting it has security under control, the Defence Secretary has refused to rule out the possibility of bringing in more servicemen and women to protect the Games. We are determined to make this Games safe, uh, easy for spectators to use uh, and totally secure. And if we need uh, to find additional people, we'll find additional people. But at the moment, uh, we've only been asked uh, to provide an additional three and a half thousand. And more questions this afternoon in the Commons for Mr Hammond. Would troops on Olympic duties now get extra pay? The country has noticed that London bus drivers and train drivers are getting Olympic bonus payments, and yet currently our forces aren't. Can you see what contact he has had with G4S about them paying bonuses to troops called up in the last minute? We are uh, determined to ensure that our troops that are engaged in the Olympic project are properly looked after in terms of welfare while they are deployed on this operation and are properly recognised. And I am in discussion with the uh, senior members of the armed forces about how best to do that. HMS Ocean is now in position for her role as a command and control centre. And as she sailed up the Thames on Friday, those on board were getting into the Olympic spirit. That's what Games organisers would rather people were focused on right now, not security. James Hurst, Forces News. The Chief of the Defence Staff, General Sir David Richards, has told British Forces News he believes the thousands of service personnel drafted in to support the Olympics will more than make up for the shortcomings of the private security firm G4S. G4S could lose millions of pounds after agreeing to compensate the MOD over the issue. General Richards spoke exclusively to John Knighton at a Forces sporting event at the weekend and said that the contribution by the armed forces was greatly appreciated. Well, the, the country has invested billions in a successful Olympic Games and security is a vital part of that. If any organisation is patriotic, it's us and the armed forces. So I think I, I, you know, it's a no-brainer that if the company that uh, has con been contracted to do it isn't able to, then we are, as ever, a force of last resort. So, you know, although we all would, in many respects, wish it wasn't there, so it is, uh, we'll do it very well and very efficiently. And I think, uh, as long as we keep a sense of perspective about it, as I think everyone will, we'll come out of this with our reputation as a force for good internally, we use it a lot when we talk about external and intervention operations, uh, now internally more than ever it'll be, it'll be a good thing. But it's tough for many people. I'd just like to say as ever a huge thank you for the way people responded and um, for, they should all know and their families should know the government is utterly committed to giving the armed forces the recognition uh, they deserve for this but also that they're looked after properly while doing the job. What guarantees will the government be able to give forces personnel who maybe have booked holidays for post-Afghanistan leave that those will be honoured because they're having to take on the extra commitments? I was at a meeting yesterday in number 10 chaired by the Prime Minister and you know I can just tell you this is from the very top of government down I'm also there if there was any problems, but there won't be, um, uh, you know, at a, level, at a junior level in interpreting that correctly uh, to make sure it happens. So this is a big 
Prime Ministerial, Secretary of State for Defence and the rest of the government, absolute commitment. They're very grateful to the, us for doing what we're doing. They know we'll do a good job and they will make sure we're looked after. In the Olympic Park over the last few days, it's fairly clear to me that the British public are pleased to see uh, sailors, soldiers, airmen, Royal Marines in uniform looking after them and dealing with their security. It actually puts them at ease. I think uh, I was down there too at the beginning of last week um, and, I, and the few civilians that were coming through, most of my contractors and so on, were saying exactly the same thing. And the great thing about the way we go about these things is it's a sort of um, a smile, it's efficient, uh, they're polite and they get people through quickly and uh, you know I suppose what we do is bring a command and control dimension to it, the very few civilian comes best from the world just you know most they can't do it and so from the top down and there's a full colonel running the Olympic site, uh, Colonel Wilson, I, I mean you know right down to the most newly joined guy, I talked to some, a couple of very young newly joined sailors and for them of course it's a great adventure but they're viewing it as an operation. Uh, my only um, absolute you know, need is to make sure that the new ones, these extra 3,500, are properly housed and looked after. And General Nick Parker, who's in charge of all this for us, is absolutely on the case. And he'll tell me if there's any problems. And of course, it's not just about security and looking after the venues. We do have some of our forces personnel competing with the very best in the Olympics and the Paralympics. Well, I, I think it's fantastic that the armed forces are playing a key role in all aspects of the Olympics. Uh, I was in the city of London um, a few days ago uh, with a livery company that were briefing me on how they have helped pay for some of our Paralympians. Eight uh, of the Paralympians selected for Britain are ex-services, two or three reservists. Then we've got others in the main Olympics, uh, and I can't wait to see them prosper. But um, you know, it was something we should all be hugely proud of.